what is going on guys solomon back again today we are getting back to work on the s6 today i want to go over the tuning process from my understanding so i did flash this car already so i have a pretty good understanding of how to do it i did make a mistake that is going to cause me to have to redo everything so i wanted to make a video because i did get a couple comments on the last video asking about how this process is done and this was extremely intimidating to me initially and i really couldn't find any videos all i did find was a really really helpful thread i'm going to link that down in the description it really really it's it's great it's a great thread but i just kind of wanted to make a video of me doing it then you can reference this video and then if i miss something you can reference the thread if the thread's missing something hopefully i'll cover it in this video and can kind of take the scariness out of this so this applies to pretty much every b5 and c5 chassis audi so this could be you know an a6 a b5 s4 um, an rs6 but really this is a tuning process going off of flashing. So taking a file and sending it directly to the ECU and getting rid of the old file that was previously loaded on the ECU. So this isn't really a tutorial on how to write a tune. Um, more or less, if you have a tune file that someone else has written and you wanna flash it to your car. So for this in particular, this tune is going to tell the car that it's no longer working with a automatic transmission. It is now a manual transmission. And then this tune also incorporates emission deletes. So I deleted my secondary air injection. Um, the catalytic converters are gone on this car. So we're gonna wanna get rid of those rear O2s. So I was lucky enough to find a file that had all of that. So I'm not gonna have to deal with any annoying check engine lights. Everything's gonna be calibrated perfectly for the setup that I have. That being said, I really wouldn't just making this video to just help you guys out. I, I don't really know if this is going to help. Um, I'm pretty new to this, but I'm just going to jump right into it. All right, guys. So getting started with this process, you are going to need a few things. Um, what I have here, a Windows computer. This can be a laptop, whatever. This is literally my work computer. It's running like the newest version of Windows. This works fine. You also need, and this is important, you cannot use a Rostec cable to flash the car. The, the cable has to be extremely dumb. So like the Rostec cables, they have a lot of stuff in there that like interprets the file you're sending, stuff like that. It's not going to communicate properly with the ECU. The ECU needs a cable like this. This is... I have two because these are very cheap and they break all the time. This is a KKL, so it runs on the K line. This, you, you need this. So just type this into eBay, KKL, VADCOM, 409.1. This one was $10. It's kind of junky. I put in that same thing into eBay and found one that was $30. It's still working. Who knows? It might not last. I'd get a bunch of these on hand. They're not expensive like Rostec, and it's it's what you need for this. You can't use the Rostec cable. You might be able to. You have to like put it in dumb mode or something, but this, this plugs right in. Uh, it comes with the drivers, everything like that. So this and a Windows computer are what you need. Now, if you didn't know, the automatic cars from this era of Audi have the engine control module, ECU, and then they also have a TCU, which is a transmission control module. This works in conjunction with the ECU to operate the automatic transmission. So when I said in the beginning that I failed the first time, I forgot to pull that out. So if you flash it, flip the key, the TCU is going to go right back to telling the ECU that this is still an automatic car because that computer's there. It's, you know, you still have the park neutral drive, whatever, on the bottom of the screen there, like you'll see in the automatic cars versus the press clutch pedal to start engine that you see on the manual cars. So first things first, I'm going to pull that thing out. Now, where this lives is on the right side of the car. Now, even if you're dealing with a left-hand drive car, 
our right hand drive car is always going to be on the right side and it's going to be under this carpet so i'm going to start working on first i'm going to plug the battery in slide the seat back pull up some of this trim and we should be able to get it out i did this on my b5s4 before um this shouldn't be an issue all right guys so right side of the car here um Make sure you are gentle, but pull up this piece of trim here. It should just pop out, get your fingernails under it. And there's two screws on this panel right here. Just kind of pull it out. You can see a bunch of wires exposed back there, but then your TCU is literally under this carpet. So if you just want to pull up on the carpet a little bit, you can slide it out. There's no way I'm going to be able to do it with one hand <laughs> all right so there it is it you can pull it this cord has a little bit of slack on it but you can see it's in this box just pop it off these tabs and just unplug it all right so cover taken off you can see we are presented with this little computer it looks like we just got to pull out that screw that screw and then it should pop right out all right guys, so now that I've removed the transmission controller, you can see being that I've already flashed the car, this is what we get. Boom, press the clutch pedal to start engine. So I had already done this with the TCU connected. I want to reflash it just to make sure there wasn't anything hanging um, in there that would have been pushed over from that controller. I'm not sure if that's even the way it works, but just to be safe, that's what we're gonna do. All right guys, so before we flash, you wanna hook up your battery to some consistent power. Just have a simple battery charger placed on there over top of the connectors. That's just gonna make sure you don't have any power dips. Um, it is something that can affect the writing of the ECU. If you get a power dip, if it dips below 12 volts, uh, some of the ECU is gonna turn off and you're gonna you're gonna mess stuff up so it takes like five minutes to slap one of these on there you won't have to worry about it all right so we are finally at the point where we are ready to flash the car uh if you haven't done so already make sure you go down to the description and read the thread that somebody was kind enough to send over my way that helped me get this process down uh, like i said the reason i'm making this video is the thread is pretty helpful but if you're just kind of a little bit concerned you never did it before um, i'm just making this video to show you it's not that bad so if you look in the thread you can see they recommend to download this program uh Nef Moto, nefarious motorsports i think is the full name of it but you're going to want to download this program and get it all set up it's pretty self-explanatory um and then go ahead and open it up make sure you have your blue USB plugged in for the OBD2. Now remember this is the K-Line. Um, it is the cheap one that you can get off of eBay. Make sure you have your drivers installed properly and go ahead and open up Neth Moto and you can see your device will show up. If not, go ahead and refresh devices. Now I have these settings set from when I did it the first time so I know this is the way to go. You're gonna want this set to KWP2000. That's the desired communication protocol and then 9600 bowed i think that's how you say that that's just the transfer rate that you're going to run on the cable um and then once you have that you're going to want to make sure you go this is info you want to make sure you're in flashing this is what you're actually be flashing a bin file over to the car so if you read in that thread as well, you can see there's a few different bin files that they have for the American S6 ECU. I am going with the no emissions because I do not have catalytic converters, nor do I have secondary air injection. So this is going to be the file for me. If you are gonna retain that those devices on your engine, you may wanna go with the S6 that has the emissions in there um, if you're not flashing an s6 you're going to want to make sure you get the proper bin file for your car but you can find these bin files all over the place um, that's basically the point of this you get if you know how to write a bin file you can write the bin file for the car specifically and then send it over if not you can find someone to write one for you to your exact specifications that way you can code out certain 
points that can be somewhat annoying, such as secondary O2 sensors, anything to do with emissions if you are trying to just kind of trim down the engine bay. Anything really you can you can code out if if you know what you're doing. I do not know how to write the bin files but uh, it's something I'd love to learn at some point. So you wanna make sure you download the bin file, make sure you choose flash file and go ahead and just place it into this flash file port here. Um, and then the memory layout for the S6, you're gonna wanna do the 29F800BB. This is also the same memory layout for the B5S4. So if you're doing this on the B5S4, it's going to be the same one. Um, I, I, I would happen to believe that it's gonna be the same for the A4 as well. Um, that B5, C5 generation is going to use that same memory layout. So once you guys have all that set, go ahead and take your key and flip the car on. You're going to want to be in accessory position. Don't try and start the car, but then you can just go ahead and plug the OBD2 in. All right, so you guys can see I got the OBD2 in. It is flashing. Um, we're going to come back over to our program. Now you see where it says connect slow. I'm going to go ahead and hit that. You can see it is validating that the device is in dumb mode, which is a default by these cheap eBay cables. And we have fully connected to the ECU on the S6. You can see where it says connected there. Now, if you are having issues with getting this device to pop up, um, the, I did as well with one of my other eBay cables. You will need to get another eBay cable more than likely. Um, some of the cheaper ones, they are only one time use. So they will brick themselves after one use. I paid about $30 for this cheaper one and it has worked two or three times now. So maybe just spend the 30 bucks up with the link in the description and you can pick this one up, but we are completely connected. Um, and really at this point, you just want to make sure you have your bin file loaded properly and you know that that's the file that you're going to want to run on the car. Um, and then really, we're just going to go over to full write flash. That is going to be writing this bin file to the ECU in the car. So go ahead and hit that. And you can see, you just want to make sure you go through this and just make sure everything's good here. You got a loaded valid file and it's going to be the one that's going to be meant for this ECU. You want to make sure your engine is not running. You want to make sure your battery is at least at 12 volts. You can see we were pegged a little bit farther. The windshield wipers continue to go even though this is turned off. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but make sure you're above 12 volts. Like I said, just put that battery charger on there and you should be fine. Um, and then really it's just basically kind of wavering that they are not responsible for any bad bin files that you may write to the ECU. Uh, yeah, so you can literally just hit okay and it is going to start doing its thing. It's going to data transfer. This took about 10 minutes when I did it before, but you can see there's a little progress bar. You can kind of just let the computer sit and do its thing. 1% complete. It does take a while. I'm not going to film this entire thing, but just make sure computer's fully charged, battery's charged, and just let it do its thing. All right, so I'm not sure if you guys can kind of see what's going on here. The program itself does this tuning in chunks, so it will send a certain range of the ECU, the new file. It will confirm that the flash was successful for that portion, and then it'll go ahead and delete the old files that were in with that portion. So you can see it kind of just goes back and forth with that, and we'll just give you continuous updates on how it's doing. Um, but it kind of just does it in sections to make sure everything goes smoothly. At least that's how I'm interpreting this information. But you can see it's been about two or three minutes and it is just continuing to push along. We're at 22%. Alrighty, so we are back. 12 minutes, 57 seconds. Wrote 19 of 19 sectors in the flash memory. And we're complete. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay here. It's gonna disconnect from the car. I'm going to go ahead and flip the car off. And that is that. You should, if you have your TCU disconnected, you should be able to flip this on and see that beautiful press clutch pedal to start engine. But we are not quite done. There's a few things of VCDS that we have to take care of. All right, guys, go ahead and swap out the eBay cable for the Rostec cable. I'm sure if you're this deep into these cars, you definitely have one of these. Um, go ahead and open up VCDS. 
and we're going to be following along with the thread here. So we're going to go down to this post, um, specifically post number 31. It's going to give us the numbers and everything that we need for the engine coding within VCDS. So after you flash your file, your bin file with Nefmodo, you're going to need to recode the ECU to manual within VCDS as well. I'm not sure what the purpose of the redundancy is here with this, but go ahead and click engine. I've already done this, so I'm not going to redo it, but I'm going to show you exactly where you need to go. As our wipers continue to move, we're going to need to figure out what's going on with that. All right, so we're connected to the ECU. We're going to come over here to coding 07. And go ahead and open that up and you can see where I have already changed. So software coding, I have already moved this number into there, 10712. Um, I'm not sure what number was in there previously, but go ahead and keep it on file. Yeah, I put it in a notepad file right there, 06752. Go ahead and keep that on file. That's the number that should be in there if you're working on the S6. Go ahead and move that number there, 107. One, two, into software coding, and go ahead and hit do it. Um, I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it again. And then clear out your fault codes. And then go ahead and go back to ABS, which is gonna be ABS breaks. Um, go ahead and go into the coding there as well. You can see in your ABS module, you have the code 06397 they just want you to change that to 06395 so whatever's in here you just want to put a five on the end of it um, and then go ahead and hit do it and that should be everything as far as the software side goes so now that you do have the car coded to a manual um, there is a few other things you will need to do to have the car start again so you did see how I had my transmission and everything hooked up that way I could start the car with the automatic coding um, now the car is fully aware that it is a manual the ECU is a manual ECU now you've completely coded it so we are gonna have to run the wire from the switch on the clutch up to the ECU I am gonna show you guys that in the next video but that's it so if that was helpful for you guys, go ahead and drop a comment. If you have any additional questions on this, I would be happy to answer them in the comment section as best I can. But other than that, guys, stay tuned. We are already getting to work on getting this thing back together, and I cannot wait to take it on the road. See you guys.